Rwanda's police superintendent announced this week that 140 Rwandan policemen have undertaken special training to serve as peacekeepers in Haiti. But many Africa scholars and journalists say they will not serve peace but military force. Anne Garrison has a story. The Rwanda New Times reports that 140 Rwandan policemen have undertaken special training before heading to Haiti as peacekeepers. However, many Rwandans asked why Rwandan police were headed to Haiti with grenades exploding in the country's capital, Kigali, on February 19th and March 4th. And the major opposition party still denied permits to convene because authorities say their conventions would endanger public safety though they must convene to legally register and field candidates in this year's presidential election against incumbent President Paul Kagame. However, human rights investigator and war reporter Keith Herman Snow, who has spent many years covering the Great Lakes region of Africa, says that Rwanda's police detail to Haiti is simply an extension of its role as the Pentagon's proxy, wherever it seeks to project military force. The idea that they're sending so-called peacekeepers from Rwanda to Haiti is absurd. And anyway, it needs to be connected to the power of certain factions in the corporate world whose involvement both in Rwanda and Haiti has gone unmentioned. And that would be the connection to the Clintons. The Clinton Foundation in Haiti, as well as the Clinton Foundation operations in Rwanda, have been very nefarious. The people that will be sent to Haiti, most likely they were Rwandan patriotic front soldiers or former soldiers. But Haiti also has this big humanitarian sector like they have in Central Africa, which preys on people suffering and is connected deeply to the Clinton money-making machines. So people should pay attention to this because it's really just propaganda covering up for the militarization and the projection of U.S. power through these nasty military agents, which would be the Rwandan patriotic front, currently operating as a force of uh, violence in Dar for Sudan. I think there are some in, in Somalia in, as well. They're certainly in the Congo, and of course the top 40 leaders of the military in Rwanda have all been charged with war crimes, indicted with war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide by the Spanish court. So there's no peacekeeping involved. This is military power, and it protects American corporations and, and other corporations, European-connected corporations. The Rwandan government seems to be very proud of its role in Darfur. Can you say something about what kind of impact they've had there? Well, you could say the same thing about Paul Kagame's pride over their so supposedly stopping genocide in Rwanda in 1994. This picture is actually upside down from what we've been led to believe. The Rwandan contingents involved in Darfur have clearly been involved in violence that no one has reported on. Instead, all of the violence is attributed to the government of Sudan. But if you remember back in 1993 and 2 and 1 and 1990 and 1994 in Rwanda, the Rwandan Patriotic Front were never given, given any bad press whatsoever, even though they were committing massive atrocities as they marched across the country. It's important to recognize also that AFRICOM, the Pentagon's Africa Command, is involved in training and arming and funding these Rwandan Defense Forces who were formerly the Rwandan Patriotic Front. And so AFRICOM is directly supporting and arming and training uh, these top war criminals that have been charged internationally and should be Arrested. This is the answer to peace in the Congo, to arrest the top 40 Rwandans involved in war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide in the Congo and Rwanda from 1990 to the present. Keith Snow reported today that his name is now on a Rwandan intelligence service list of foreign enemies of the country who should be fought by all means possible and, if necessary, by assassination. For KPFA Radio News, I'm Ann Garrison.